Hello, I'm Cara Stanford and this is the Marketing Spaces. Today, let's take the time and space to think about where marketing sales and account management begin, end and overlap. To understand this, we first need to recap on the buyer's journey, sometimes called the sales funnel or the marketing funnel. And at each stage, there is potential for sales and marketing to be working together or separately. So let's have a look. First off is unaware. People don't know we exist. What size of people is that? So at this stage, we need to be finding out the size of the potential clients that are out there, how many people are out there. So we might say, great, we've identified that there are 10,000 potential clients for us in the southeast of England. And then, of course, we want people to be aware that we are here. And that's where we might run promotional campaigns. We might reach out to those 10,000 people specifically but we're making them aware, we're saying, hi, we're here, our company exists, our solution exists, our organization exists, this is what we can do for you. Great, they're interested in us. They're going, ah, oh. so what do we give them at this stage? How do we help retain their interest? How do we answer their questions? And who's doing that? Right, you're considering us, you're considering us as an option, brilliant. But if you're considering us, we know that you're considering other people. So again, we need to make sure you've got the right information and that people are able to find out what they want to find out. Adopting, this is where the action takes place. That might be a purchase decision. It might be if, if we're um, operating in the are an arena where we want donations or perhaps we're trying to get people to change their behavior. Adoption is where the action happens. And then loyalty doesn't stop there once they've done what we need them to do. We want them to engage in one of the three R's. We want them to either um, have repeat business, so where they're coming back to us again and again, or refer us or recommend us. So that's a quick recap of the buyer's journey. Now, let's think about who's doing what at each stage. And this can be very important as a marketer because too often we can find ourselves in conflict situations with salespeople and perhaps even with account managers. And if you're operating on your own or you're in a very small business, the reason that it's under, important to understand who's doing what at each stage is that you might want to bring someone else in to, to, to fulfill a different role, or you might want to outsource. So code down the bottom, we can see that the turquoise is going to represent marketing, the dark blue sales or business development, as you might call it, and the green is account management. So you do get some organizations where marketing looks after everything, every single thing, from finding out all about the marketplace to reaching out to the customer all the way through to dealing with the customers and clients and adopting the loyalty. This is particularly typical if you're running a digital business where everything is online. Of course, there's a lot of emphasis there on, on digital marketing. Digital marketers will often be responsible for the whole funnel. It could be that actually the sales team are doing it. And I do see this in organizations which have grown up with a sales focus. So they've got a very active sales team or sales person, and they will go out and they will find the clients and they will communicate with them throughout. And they might undertake activities that we might typically think of as marketing. Sometimes it works really well where actually you have a sales person and a marketing person and they're operating at throughout the funnel and hopefully they're working well together. For example, take that 10,000 people that we know are potential clients, the sales team might say, right, help me identify the top 20 and I will phone them. Marketing might say, well, could you wait? Because I'm going to run a huge awareness campaign. So when we do the awareness campaign, that's going to give me data on some of these people. So then I can give you a list of people to phone. And you can start to see how it works well. We get down to the point where people are considering and the sales team is saying, great, I can see that all of these people are considering us as an option. I'd like to reach out to them with an email. And marketing will say, brilliant. If you're reaching out to them with an email, then I can provide you with a great client portfolio that you can send to them to help them make that decision. That's when it can work really, really well, when we work well and we work together with our sales colleagues. Sometimes it can be that actually different people are doing different things at different points. So it could be that it begins with marketing, doing top of funnel. And again, I've worked with organizations where we say, right, let's just have marketing focus on top of funnel. And at the point where we have warm leads, we will get hand them over to our business development people and say, right, here are the warm leads. 
here are the people that it's worth you phoning up because they they are really interested they're ready for a demonstration they're ready for a conversation and again the business development people might say brilliant what do I go in there with I've got my slide deck we go oh, great well actually we've got some updated information for you that you might want to put into your slide deck and as marketers we're supporting um, sales and business development at this point and then once the purchase has been made it might be over to an account manager who's going to look after them and nurture them as I said this is also really useful when it's perhaps you're a solopreneur in running your own business or you're a business owner with a very small team and people are having to do all this and the reason it's useful is it allows you to say actually maybe it is time that we brought someone else in to do the awareness part or actually our skill or my skill isn't picking up the phone and nurturing the clients so I'll bring someone else in who can do that or if perhaps you're running a business that's purely digital and through that so you don't actually ever meet your customers it might be well I'd like to kind of leverage that a little bit more and maybe I should be reaching out to my top 10 customers and helping them encourage recommendations and referrals so let's just take some time to Think about this and my suggestion would be that you sketch out for your organization which activities happen at each stage of the buyer's journey and by activities I mean the marketing sales account management activities so at unaware who's doing the research who's finding out where your potential clients are who's figuring out what to what's the best way to communicate with them at awareness who's running those awareness campaigns who's setting them up or who's picking up the phone to people what what are you doing and who's doing it so just take some time to draw that out and now think well actually how does this feel for the person that's working their way through the funnel so as a prospective client do i feel that it's joined up do i feel that actually i'm relating to one organization throughout my whole journey or do i feel very much that you know, one minute I've been dealing with Amir, who's really great and understands me. And then the next I've been passed on to John, who doesn't quite get me. And he's asking me the same questions that I've already answered. And I've had a great relationship with Amir. What's going on here? So start to think, how does it feel for the person that's on the other end of that? Because ultimately, it's all about our clients. It's all about our customers. Do they feel like they're getting a smooth journey? And again, if there's a lot of digital marketing going on, a lot of automation, go back through everything and look at it from one point, from their point of view. Are they getting emails from one named person or from a different named person each time? Do they know who to contact? Is the tone of voice the same? Once you've done this mapping out and you've started to then think about how to ensure that there's a great experience for your target audience throughout the whole of the journey, now think about who should or could be doing each activity or stage. Is there overlap in your organisation? Are there times where you should be working with other people? Is there no one in your organisation? And actually you're thinking we need to bring someone in. Take the time to map out ideally what should be done. This is also a really great exercise to go through with colleagues in your business, because when you go through this, it makes things a lot clearer and everyone can understand where they fit in, how they could be fitting in and what they could be doing. So thank you so much for your time. I hope that you found that useful. And I'm Cara Stanford. This is The Marketing Spaces.